So the goal for today is to finally start putting some pieces actually on the VR5. We're gonna start off with this right here in this box, which is my timing chain kit for the VR5. We should have four guides in here. One, two, three, and number four. We have this chain, this chain here, and then whatever's in that one. And under here, big reveal. Oh, that was, dang it, dang it. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me the engine, please. What's happening here? In my head, it went way smoother. Okay, bam, there it is, VR5. So, replacing this chain, all of these guys. I think this is a new, uh, new one in that top box over there. The upper chain here, guide, guide, and the top guide. It shouldn't be too hard, I watched the video. I'm not gonna do a full in-depth, like, tutorial on how to do the chains on here. There's other videos to do that, but I will show you guys the basic things. It's kind of similar to how the 12 lv VR6 is. Obviously you want tension or you want the slack on this side where the tensioner pieces are, but it shouldn't be too hard to do. So the first thing we must do is rotate the engine to TDC and lock up the cams. I'm hoping my 12 lv VR6 cam alignment tool will work on this one. If it's wide enough, it looks like it might be just wide enough. You can't use this side, obviously, that's for the 12 valve, but this flat side, I think it might work. Yeah, it should work. That'd be okay. All right, so first things first, like any other VR, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the engine to TDC. There is a little notch down here on the block that'll line up to a notch on the crank pulley, and then we can go ahead and slide our cam locking tool right in like that now you want to make sure if your top timing cover here is off and there's no tensioner bolt pushing on the chain if you try to rotate this and don't hold this down there's a chance that your chain will jump on the teeth now for me not the biggest deal i'm going to be taking all this off and retime the engine anyways but if you're not planning on pulling your chains off make sure you hold this in before you rotate the engine around so now we have our engine tdc and you can tell by this little notch right there by my finger that lines up to the notch on the crank we have our 12 volt vr6 cam tool but it also works for this one locking the cams and then over here so on the 24 valve vr6 and the 20 valve v5 there's a little notch well not not the notch piece there's a little line you can see it above so the notch is here right above the notch there's a little line right there that matches with that groove right there so this and this line up same on this one right above this notch there's a little line right there matching up with that groove there coming down to our intermediate shaft there's a tooth Inside the second one back there, you can see it's pointing to the top. There's a little line, you can't really see it. It's kind of hard to see from here, but that's lined up. So now we know our engine is for sure in TDC. Everything is lined up. And now it's time to go ahead and pull all of it off. So here we have all of our new timing pieces, lower chain, upper chain, lower guide, all three upper guides, one, two, and three, new tensioner bolt. And then I have in the box over there, the bottom tensioner, which is this one. So. We have everything we need to do this job. So our first step is done. I've removed all the pieces for the top end timing. We have the three guides here, the chain, and the, obviously the tension bolt, which is already out, but it's part of this whole setup. Um, I remove this one first usually on the left side here. Once that one's out of the way, you get a whole bunch of slack in the chain and you can walk it up over this one and then get the entire thing up and out of the way. So moving on to the bottom side, now we have the bolt that holds on these two gears, one and two. We have the tension on this side that puts tension on this side of the chain and then our guide on this side right here. So we've got our bolt here out of the way and the two that hold on the tensioner out as well. And so I can do this all in one hand here. This should just pop right out. There is the lower tensioner. This should come straight out towards me. Oh, there's all the, yep, perfect, like that. Set this over there. And then now this guide, it has little bolts, but they just kind of screw in. This whole thing will slide off the top of here, which we need to go on the bottom side first. Pop it out, there's our bottom chain. Set that over there. And then our last guide, voila. We have taken off all the old timing pieces and now we can go ahead and put all of our new pieces in. Timing of VR6 really isn't too difficult to do. Just make sure all of your points line up. This is flat facing up. The little ground down tooth, which is right there, matching the little line. It's not too hard to do. Um, but once in the car, you have like the train and everything in the way, it's just kind of a pain to get to this spot. But once you're here, it's actually not too difficult to do. So now, 
everything's off out of the way, we can go ahead and start putting in our new stuff. So now for us to put all of our stuff back on the engine, we want to time the bottom section first, the crank here to the intermediate shaft. Once that is done, we can move on from this section to the top. The only difference between a 12 volt VR6 and this one, these pieces here on the end of the cams will actually rotate a little bit. You can see how they move back and forth. We want to make sure they're turned all the way to the left and having this line right there still line up to this one and then once it's on and the chains across the guide and across the top i believe it's 16 um little pins between this one and this one and again you want to make sure it's turned all the way to the left and it can't move all right our first step is on minus the tensioner but i want to show you this part first this bottom section kind of tricky to get this to line up properly if you see inside there there's a little tooth on this one and there's also a line behind it on that immediate shaft you want them to line up so how i do this section the easy way to do it i put this guide on first with this trainer on the bottom of the crank and leaving all your slack on this side and what you basically do is hold this side kind of up and slide this entire both um gears here the front one and the back one kind of in and you kind of take a tooth out or put a tooth in whether you're too far this way or this way until it lines up and then once you have it just press it on this will only fit one way so you can't really put it on the wrong direction just make sure your lines line up it's not too hard to do and keep the slack on this side so now once i put my new tensioner in and have this like this our bottom side shall be done and with that our bottom end has officially been timed again all of our marks line up the little tooth to the line and then the ground down tooth here to the line on the block. Everything's good to go. All of our tension was on this side. Our tension is in, it's all snugged up. Everything's good to go. I haven't torqued any of these down just yet. I'm gonna go back and do that once everything is done. But I can only assume, this is my 12 valve VR6 manual. I can only assume that all the specs for all these bolts should be the same for this one um, compared to a 12 valve. But I'll double check online as well. But I can only assume it's probably all the same stuff. So now moving on to the top section. I've already put this top guide in between. Now looking at the chain here, you can see in camera, that one right there is like a copper color. This one over here has a copper cover. I believe these two go on the cams um, from right to left side. And then these ones down here, these copper ones on the bottom go on the intermediate shaft. Like I was saying before, you want to have, let's see if we can do this one hand here. Possibly there, hang on. A little more over actually, one more over there no there and there okay so you can see the copper one is right there and this copper one's right there lined up with that line right there there should be 16 pins when i say pins these little pieces right here in the chain 16 pins between line to line so let's count we have so on the inside not this outside one on the inside one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then not that one there because that one is past the line. So we have 16 across the top, so that is good to go. Now, obviously, I have the guides to put back in, so I want to show you this portion first. So 16 across the top, making sure these are all the way to the left on both sides. We want to have all the tension on this side and the slack over here because that's where our tensioner um, bolt goes in. But yeah, so yeah, now that that's good, now that I know that's how it's supposed to be, we'll go through and put the rest of the guides in and get this all hooked up to this gear down here. All right, with that, everything is on bottom and top. All of this is lined up in time properly. We have our guides, our tensioner, our new chain, everything that's good to do down here. And then up top, we have our new guide, uh, tensioner guide, and then our top guide up here. Everything is lined up properly. All of the tension is on this side where the slack is over here for the tensioner to push in like so. So right now, it looks like everything is good to go. We still need to go through, uh, put the top cover on, put the bolt in, rotate the engine over a few times and make sure everything still lines up. But as of right now, everything is looking pretty good so far. All right, you ready for this? Ready for it? Bam! Oh, that looks really good, yeah. Came out super shiny. Oh yeah. Nice and smooth. So again, this company was uh, TriStar Color. We got yours for your... Um, it's like Ludwig. Not the same with this? Okay, different company. Yeah, a different one. But it worked well. I don't need this for the car yet, but woo! Oh, this is really shiny. Yeah, it came out really nice. Are you going to do like a quick run this or no? I've already cleared it. Oh. Yeah, no, it came out really nice, nice and shiny, nice and smooth. But right now I need one of these pieces. I need the upper cover here so I can go ahead and rotate the engine around. But yeah, this stuff came out really nice. Let me touch it. Yeah, came out sick. I like it. And I wasn't planning on doing the engine block in wrinkle black. I was going to use this as a gloss black, but. I mean, that might. I mean, it's rated. Yeah, I recommended it. It's rated to 350, so it's high temp. So maybe we should do the block in Wrinkle Black. It would be cool. Maybe. We'll see. 
Yo, that upper cover looks so sick in wrinkle black. I don't know, should I do the block? I was gonna do the block in gloss black. But seeing this, I don't know, it might be cool to do the entire block in wrinkle black just to match this piece here. But our tensioner bolt is in, upper cover is on. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the lockout plate out, rotate the engine around four times, check and make sure everything lines back up on the fourth turn. And if it does, we did it right. So I've gone through and marked everything with gold nail polish. So gold, gold, a bit easier to see. Gold down there on the tooth. And then over here on the crank, we have our line right there, the notch on the inside and the one on the block. All right, this is our last rotation around. So as my gold line comes around, which is right there, and as we get it to line up right there at the bottom, like so, we should now be able to go around and make sure our tool fits back in. Mine's a little bit bent, but get in there. There it is, our tool's in. Come on to this side. We have our gold dot with our notch. We have our gold dot with our notch. Come down here, we have our gold tooth right there with this line, and that is facing up towards the top. We did it, boys. We did it. So yeah, overall, timing of the VR5, super, super simple, almost identical to the 12 of VR6. Only thing that's different is just these that rotate. But other than that, it's all the exact same things. Very easy to do. If you can follow like basic instructions and just make sure things line up properly, um, you should have no problem timing your own VR6, VR5, whatever it may be. It's not too hard to do. All right, so next on the list for today, I wanna go through and paint the block. I think I wanna do the wrinkle black. I think I'm gonna do it. I really like how this came out. Like that finish is so, so nice. And I think it looks sick having the entire block in wrinkle black. Like I said, this will be nice fresh silver um, and then wrinkle black on the bottom. I think it'll look really good. I have a few more spots to clean off real quick and I've had the heaters going all day. So it's kind of warm in here. Uh, so we shouldn't have any issues. And then once the block is planed in, I'll go through and put a couple pieces on today, like the new water pump. I'm still waiting on my new seals for this one for the crack pipe, but I don't wanna put that in just yet. Also, I'm having a hard time finding the gasket, new gasket on the backside between the cover piece here and the actual block. I mean, this one wasn't leaking, but I wanna put a new one in there, but I can't find the exact part number or the exact part just yet. But we're getting there. Progress, 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 boys. So at this point, we are just about ready to start painting the block. I've gone through and got just about all the dirt off. I need the compressor off fast and blow the rest off. Uh, but you can see I blocked up a few things. You don't have to go through and fully block off every single one of these, but make sure you remember which ones were bare metal because once you paint over it, you want to go back and sand these ones down because you want to have the contact patches like metal to metal. Um, for the sensors down here, I've covered those ones up. Anything with a hole directly inside the engine bay, cover that because you don't want any paint going inside to there. So covered, covered. The rest of these I'll sand back down afterwards. I've got some plastic in here so it doesn't even there. I put the old water pump on that side to block this section. Uh, we covered up the crank, covered up the top of the engine, and then on the back, we'll go through and paint this as well. But it's gonna look good. I'm excited. Then over here, you don't want to paint anything on this. When I first, my first VR6, I painted all these pieces, but you want to keep anything that's bare metal beforehand, you want to have bare metal after. So all this stuff, all this stuff, make sure it's the way you found it from before. Give you guys one final before look. Like I said, this engine block wasn't too dirty to begin with, but it's about to look way, way better. All right, just finished the third and final layer of the VHT Wrinkle Plus. Gonna bust up the heat gun dry this thing i mean it looks sick right now in the gloss black but it's about to look way cooler now it's not 100 percent dry just yet but it looks so cool i love this wrinkle effect it is looks so so cool and it'll look even better once you go through and sand all these spots back to our metal and then also once this is painted and the rest of the pieces at least for now the block is looking so so good so I still have a handful of pieces to get painted and then I'm waiting for a few seals and gassets to show up. But little by little, we're making some good progress here. So I think we're at a good stopping point for today. Hopefully my gassets and seals show up this week. That way we can go through and get the entire engine assembled and together. And then after that, it's just clutch, trans, and wiring harness, which I spoke to Matt from Eurocraft yesterday. He said he started on the harness either this week or next week. So that'll be back to us very, very soon, which is dope. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Do not forget, be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.
was doing just fine before I met you I drank too much and that's an issue But I'm okay 